What's up, buddy? How you doing? Been reading any good comics lately? Did you get your copy of ISOM 2 from Eric July, who, uh, you know, as he's always telling us, is the most athletic man in comics? Look at this build. Look at these beautiful arms that are not... What a weird looking arm this man has. Look, I'm not I'm not an athletic guy myself, but I'm not the guy out here telling everybody that uh, I'm the peak of fitness, as Eric July has said. For those of you who don't know, Eric July is a guy. He's made a comic called Isom. Very bad comic. Not good. Uh, he's managed to trick a lot of people into thinking it's good, though, because he has a lot of friends in a lot of influential places. He knows a lot of YouTube guys. He can go on their streams. He goes on Fox News, talks about how he's going to destroy the woke mind virus or whatever else. And uh, unfortunately for him, uh, his comic is not selling as well as he had hoped. And that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, now, here's, wh here's what any rational person would say. They would look at these numbers. This is the campaign for ISOM 2. $2.3 million raised. And you would go, this guy raised $2.3 million for a comic book. Oh, my God. This must be the happiest man alive. He must be He must be thrilled. Well, real quick, let's go to the Eric July uh, page. We'll ignore all the videos he makes uh, lying about me. He likes that. I don't know why he's so obsessed with me. But let's see. Ripperverse has sold over 100,000 books. You would think this would be the happiest man on earth. Sold 100,000 books. What is good, everybody? Hope you what is good? Well... Uh, Guys, if you listen to him talk about selling 100,000 books, look, he looks bored. He looks mad. Why is he not? I would be smiling if I made this video. I'd go, I can't believe I sold 100,000 books. What? How? This is incredible. This is the greatest thing that ever happened to me. He's, this is just an, a sad, broken man. Oh, wait, hold on. We got a little smile. What was that? Um, uh, certainly a lot of growth there <laughs> with uh, some unannounced projects that are being Worked on. Okay, he's excited about stuff that's coming up, but he's not He's not happy about selling 100,000 books. So why is that? Well, here's the problem. Eric July's an idiot. And as an idiot, he made a lot of money on the first campaign. Let's look at the first campaign really say ISOM campaign. ISOM number one. Now, the first campaign, $3.7 million. And this man, apparently, everybody told him, we said, uh, listen, man, that, that's great. I saw number one. When you sell a number one comic, it's exciting. It's the launching off point for the character. It's the first appearance of the character. You know, when you collect comics, you don't want Superman number two. You don't want action comics number two. You want action comics number one. So the, the number one of any new character is going to sell incredibly well, four million. And everybody tried to tell him, but listen, it's going to drop off. You had four, okay, 43,000 people bought it. Uh, and a lot of people, let's be clear, Eric bought it because they like you. They want to support your success, whatever else. But this number is going to drop off. This man did not listen to reason. He said, we're going to make the same amount, if not more. And we'll talk about why he believed that, how we know he believed that. And that's why he went out and he spent crazy amounts of money. He bought himself a warehouse. He's got like a dozen employees. Okay, 2.3 million, it's all well and good until you lose half of it to taxes. Uh, you're paying for a huge warehouse space, you're paying for all the inventory, and you're paying all these employees that you do not need. Now, here's how I know Eric July got ahead of himself, and here's how I know he's having a bad day, that he only made 2.3 million, which any other person on earth would have you know, properly budgeted their life, budgeted their company, and would be able to subsist on that forever, he's going to burn through this money immediately because he's a psychopath, and he's got too many employees and too much overhead. Okay, benchmarks. Benchmarks is what he calls He doesn't call them stretch goals because he doesn't do stretch goals. Unlike every other crowdfunding campaign on Earth where, you know, depending on the amount of money you raise, everybody gets bonus stuff. You get trading cards. You get little tchotchkes. Uh, he rewards himself with the more money that he makes. Uh, let's see. Uh, one of these was he was going to buy another van. Did he buy the van? Or did he finally get rid of the van trading? Oh, no, at $2 million. At $2 million, guys, I'm going to buy myself a van. <laughs> That's not a stretch goal, Eric. That's not... You don't tell your... Fa guys, with all your money, I want to give back to you by buying myself a van. Now, here's how I knew this guy is nuts, is that anyone could have told him, Eric, you're going to make less the second time around, which is fine. And there's nothing shameful about it. Just plan for it accordingly, okay? If you had 
Uh, 42,000 purchasers and $4 million. Plan for half that. Plan to make about $2 million. Half these people are going to go away. He thought the number of people was going to go up. At $1 million, he says we're adding a benchmark for $5 million. He actually had a $5 million stretch goal for a limited edition ISOM statue. Eric, did you really think there was any? I mean, you could say this was the pie in the sky. Maybe we'll hit it. But just the fact that you thought this was as all possible and you were even thinking about making a statue, you're insane. You're crazy. Oh, we didn't reach $3 million, so I guess you guys are not crazy, sadly. We didn't reach the you guys are crazy goal, so unfortunately, Eric's uh, supporters are not crazy. Here's the other reason we know this guy got way too ahead of himself. Okay, here's the numbers he sold. He sold 12,000 cover A, 13,000 cover B. Only 3,000 cover D, which is a disaster for this guy because I'm pretty sure he printed these all in the same amount. So let's go. Where is cover A? Can I print on and click on it anymore? I have to actually go to the store now, uh, and we'll talk about that in a second. So here's cover A, and as he says... No more than 27500 will be available for purchase during the duration of this campaign. Uh, and the way Eric operates, as he's told everyone, is he prints everything ahead of time. So based on that, my understanding is that he printed 27,000 cover A's. If we look at cover B, it's the same thing, 27,000. And then cover D, which is his mass market cover, I think he looked at the original campaign where cover D, he made he raised 18,000. This was his mass market cover from the last one. I'm going to say he probably printed another 27,000 copies of this one, which only sold 2,000 copies. That one, I don't know how many he actually printed, but why would he print less than the other one? I assume it's a package deal. He probably said, give me, if anything, if he was this crazy, he might have printed 27,000 of each of the, these ones and said, okay, once those sell out, then I need 50,000 of cover D or whatever else. This one would have been the one, if, if, if he's gonna print more, uh, this would be the one to print a ton of, but he screwed up because cover D, he didn't add it till the campaign until midway through. So all these orders he had where people were buying covers A, B, and C, a lot of those guys would have added on a cover D if it was available for some insane reason. He waited until halfway through the campaign to add it and no one bought it. So going by the numbers, okay, he sold 12,000 out of 27. So that's like 15,000 he didn't sell. Another uh, 14,000 he didn't sell. Uh, and with the cover D being this abysmal, if he printed 27,000 of these, guys, that that would be about 50,000 books. That, that, that did not sell and will not sell. Okay? You make your sales during the campaign. That's it. Afterwards, you might have some people trickle in who, who want to get in on it uh, and want to catch a wave, want to be a part of it. But for the most part, in comic books right now, if you're running a crowdfunding campaign, the absolute bulk of your sales is during the campaign. I know right now someone is frantically typing that it's not a crowdfunding campaign. Guys, it has it has a, 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 a well, now he calls it a sales goal now. He was calling it a funding goal, I believe, in the previous one. He might have finally changed it. Revenue goal. He's always changing terms around. The fact that you have a goal post for how much money you want to raise and that you're trying to motivate your fans towards it, that's crowdfunding. It doesn't matter if you printed it ahead of time or not. And here's why you don't print it ahead of time. And this is why it's the stupidest thing in the world Eric keeps talking about. Uh, I'm so happy that I printed all these comics before getting orders so I can send them out immediately. Well, the reason you don't do that is you don't end up with 50,000 comics you can't sell. Okay, you print to the you print to the demand. And you can't estimate the demand usually, so the best thing to do, we have crowdfunding, is to ask your customers, well, how many of these do you think I should print? Why don't you guys place orders to tell me? Actually, I was constantly talking about how crowdfunding is awful and that we shouldn't do these pre-orders and we should print everything ahead of time. Well, Eric, nobody else wants to end up with 50,000 unsold books that you can't move. And here's how I know you're desperate. Uh, you're desperate because your company announced multiple times that once the campaign ended, that was it that cover A, cover B, and cover C uh, would no longer be available. Right here, here's a tweet from your company. I saw him number two, cover D. This will be the only cover which you can buy on our website after the campaign ends on the 27th. Okay. Well, let's go to the storefront right now. Uh, is this the store? All the covers are available in the store. So, look, I know I have to watch my words when I talk about Eric July because he's a very litigious individual so i don't know if i can call this false advertising but he advert this is an advertisement 
and it's incorrect. It's incorrect advertisement. How's that? Cover D will be the only cover available on our website after the campaign ends. Never mind, you can get all the different covers. They're, they're here. Now, some people are asking me, well, why does that matter? If he has unsold comics, uh, shouldn't he sell them? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, yes. Uh, of course, he, he has to. Like, he can't not sell these. But here's the problem is the comic book market is a market that has a lot of collectors and a lot of speculators and a lot of guys who will go out and buy these books in bulk because they want the price to go up, okay? They're here because they see these things as an investment. And honestly, ISOM number one was an investment. People made money buying copies of ISOM number one and flipping them on eBay. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, you as a creator, you should be very happy if you've managed to create a collectible, if you've managed to create something that people want to collect. Uh, that's a market you want to thrive. Look at Nike, okay? They want limited edition sneakers they want people fighting over them they don't want to make more uh than the demand exists they want to make limited quantities of these limited you know nike sneaker runs so that they people run out and there's a secondary market and there's a collector's mentality eric has fucked himself by destroying all of that with this campaign okay because a bunch of collectors went i gotta buy isom cover a i gotta buy isom cover b i need to buy the $100 foil cover. I have to buy it right now. There's only 5,000. If I don't buy one now during the campaign, once the campaign's over, it will not be available. How do I know that? Eric has told me himself. After the campaign ends, there's no way to get it. I have to lock in and get it now. This is something called FOMO, fear of missing out. It is a very valuable uh, marketing tactic. It's a big part of crowdfunding. The crowdfunder is ending. You only have 30 days to decide. Do you want this or not? Okay, that's why a lot of your sales come on the last day because people go, God, if I don't get it, I'm not going to be able to get it. Uh, Eric will never have FOMO again. There will never be, I mean, he'll have a little bit of it, but the fear of missing out is now dead because Eric has now said, I'm a guy, I'm a big dummy who went and printed way too many copies of this comic. I, I, I can't say lied. Can I say lied? I put out bad marketing. I put out incorrect marketing, telling people, that these would not be available after the campaign ended. Now they know I, I can't be trusted when I say that. Uh, now when Eric says, you can only get this cover during the campaign, it could very well mean, or maybe you still can, I haven't decided yet. Okay? So as a collector, you're going to be like, well, first of all, I have no, I've lost my motivation to back the campaign. Okay? There's no rush. There's no, like, you got to get it now or you're never going to get it. Because we now know that's not true. You can get it after the campaign ends. At least you were able to in this situation. Second of all, the fact that he overprinted these by so much means there will be no secondary market demand for this comic book at all. Let's go Let's go to eBay real quick. eBay.com. Okay. Now, there, there will be, uh, and you'll see this. Let's see. Isom Comic. There's going to de be demand for the things that are actually limited. Okay, uh, and let's look at sold listings real quick to see what people are buying. So, like this. This is a good example, although this is actually terrible. Oh, my. Wait, hold on. Uh, somebody got $96 for this with $20 shipping. I think that's how much it cost on the campaign to get this. He was selling these for 120 bucks. This guy actually lost money. This guy lost money. Oh, my God. He lost money selling ISOM. That's not good. Uh, but let's, let's put it this way. Okay. I sum number one, cover a, this was great. Cause Eric limited the printing. I think there was only like 3000 of these or something. And once they were gone, they were gone. And now they go for a hundred bucks. I sum number two, there's too much supply. So the price is going to go down. People are going to go, Oh, I sum two. Anyone can get that. All the covers are available in the store. Why would I pay extra for that? He could have cultivated more of this. This was what she wanted to cultivate. The FOMO, the fear of missing out, the if I don't get it, I'm not going to be able to get it. I need to buy one of every single thing or it'll never be available again. And that's what drives up prices. That what creates a secondary market demand for your comic. Instead, he printed 50,000, 27,000 copies, 27,000 copies. I don't know how many copies printed this one. And this one is big. Uh, exciting oh it's only five thousand will ever be printed it's a hundred dollars if you don't get it now you'll never be able to get it he couldn't even sell out he's got a thousand left 
It's got a thousand of those left. So you know what happens on the secondary market? You put up your hundred dollar foil cover. You try to get somebody to buy it. They go, eh, I'll give you 75 bucks for it. It's not that rare. It's not that exciting. Guys, uh, here, here are the lessons. One, uh, first of all, don't spend so much money that you make 2.3 million and you're disappointed. Uh, if you're a comic creator, if you're a small creator, you should be the happiest, happiest little boy on earth. If you made $2.3 million, uh, you should not be picking fights with people on Twitter. Cause you're so mad that you only made $2.3 million. Eric, stop throwing your money away. So that's, that's the first lesson. And we've talked about this, Eric, fire half your staff, shut down the warehouse, run a lean operation. Uh, cause the money runs out. There's no money. There's, um, you know, the American comic market, you talk about it all the time. You talk about how there's no money and everybody's bankrupt. Why did you think you would be the exception of the rule? Because you had one big campaign? You ever heard of a one-hit wonder? Okay, the money runs out. Calm the fuck down. Second of all, don't overprint. Just run a crowdfunding campaign like everybody else. We It's actually fucking incredible that we live in a time where the customer trusts us enough to give us their money without the product being available. Thank you so much to everyone who's backed my comic, Super Killer, and whatever else. You trust me to get it to you. You said, Vito, take your time, get it to me. Great. And Eric's going, no, print it ahead of time. You're nuts. We live in a time where the customer trusts us and is giving us that trust and we can deliver on it. And you think that's stupid and you just want to print extra copies so you run out, you're an idiot. Just take the fucking orders and then print to demand. So don't overprint. And also, guys, if you're a creator and you're creating collectibles, if you're creating comics, if you're creating trading cards, figurines, whatever, you can't overdo the supply. I'm a big Magic the Gathering guy, right? And right now, I'm pissed because Hasbro is just printing Magic cards. They're reprinting all these old cards. The prices are tanking. The collectors are pissed because we're like, man, I spent $50 on that card, and then you printed a couple million extra copies, and now it's worth a dollar. I feel like an idiot. You, you have to treat your thing as a collectible. Things need to be limited. You should not be printing in vast quantities. You can have your mass market cover. Again, that's the whole point of this cover D uh, is that this is the one that's always available, but you should have limited covers that are, you know, for the core fans, for the collectors and are limited to like a thousand, not 27,000, you nut job. And I guess the last thing to say is why did you tell everyone that uh, this, this was two days before the campaign ended and you were still telling people you were telling collectors and speculators, buy it now or you won't be able to get it later. Uh, you you kind of lied to them. That's, that's, I don't think, I don't think that's okay to do. I don't think it's okay to go to collectors and tell them you have to buy it now or you won't be able to get it. And then the second the campaign ends go, oh, I lied to you. You can still get it. That's really unethical. I think that's considered false advertising. Again, Eric's a litigious guy, so I, I don't know if that's the right term to use. Feel free to let me know. But if you make an advertisement and the advertisement is incorrect, I don't know. What other term would you call that? Uh, ISOM, guys. It's a mess. If you want to learn more about it, I recommend you head on over to the Biggest Problem podcast, uh, where we have our bonus episode, The Biggest Problem in ISOM. Check that out. You're going to love it. And you can learn all about this uh, terrible comic book being run by a man who is terrible at business. Uh, I find I find this fascinating. Eric July, you're you're a fucking idiot. Jesus. Have fun.